Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Welcome to Praise. My name's Heather. If you don't know me, my name's Heather. I'm the worship director here. Let's stand to our feet. If you're live streaming with us this morning, it's good to have you joining us. Um, I wanna, I wanna make sure everyone's aware, and I know that for the people who come here, normally you, are, you probably already know, but we usually take communion during our worship time. So at any point during worship, we have a few baptisms today, which is really awesome, right? Um, any point during worship, you can come and get communion. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna start this morning, we're gonna sing about, um, we're gonna sing Firm Foundation. You guys remember that song? firm foundation, um, but I know Pastor Adam talks about how like our firm foundation is when, when we have been obedient to the Lord and we know what it means to be obedient and to stand on his character because we have that experience, right? So I just wanna encourage and remind everyone this morning, he's faithful, we can have hope and peace in him and when we have experience and encounter and we have that prayer life that Pastor Adam's been really just kind of um, encouraging us, especially these past few weeks with the keys and, and really investing that time in prayer life and relationship with him, that's when we know his character. That's when we know who he really is. That's when we get to know what it means to have perfect peace and hope, amen? So let's pray and we're gonna jump right into worship. So Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can come in, in this place, we can come into your house, and you promise in your word that where two or more are gathered, you're there, so we know and recognize that you're already in our midst. God, we just, we wanna worship you, we wanna honor you, we wanna see you rightly. So Jesus, we, we glorify you this morning. Come and rest on the praises of your people, and thank you that we can stand on your faithfulness. Thank you that we can have hope in you in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this. Christ is our firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I've been
just give him some praise this morning? Good morning. Glad to be with you guys. My name is Pastor Adam Bauer, and welcome to Praise Community Church. We're so glad you're here. You guys can go ahead and take a seat for a second. Um, over the last few weeks, we've just been kind of trying to collect. How many of you guys know that like, you keep track of what's most important to you? And we've been trying to keep track of um, how we're doing all individually with our prayer lives. So we have these um, nails that are hanging up on all the pillars, and you can hang a key up there. And the, uh, the first week, I think we had like a lot of participation. The second week, I think there was some confusion about it. And the third week, uh, it just fell off a cliff. So I want to just want to be clear this week. This is our last week of collecting the data. Um, if, if you prayed this week, it's not, well, I already hung a key. I, I'm asking you to hang a key every week that you're consistent. If you prayed this week and you had your alone time with the Lord, we, we just want to track that because um, that, that's first base for us as Christians is, is actually just spending time with him. And so if that was you this week, please take time to just hang a key, whether it's up here on one of the pillars. There's a little bucket there. Go ahead and hang a key. And um, we did really well the, uh, the first week. We had about 30% of the people um, that, are, that are doing that. You might say, well, that doesn't seem high. That's very high for a church to have that many people seeking the Lord. Usually the highest is 25%. So like, just good job like in that. So, um, but I believe that, that it can be more. So um, this is our last week that we're gonna collect that data and then we'll, we'll do it um, sometime in the future to see if we got any further, further along. Jen? Good morning, Praise Community Church. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jen Matthew, and it is testimony time. And um, I just want to thank you again for everyone who is sending testimonies. Like, we truly are celebrating. Like, there are, I print them out, so there are actually, like, some literal tears on some of the emails that I print out. God is just, He is so good. And that is why we testify. Because He is love, and it is His love that heals whether it's physical bodies or people's hearts, like he is so good. Testimony I received, um, it, I, I'm gonna read it, it's just too good. I don't want to not honor this testimony. So this person was like, when I went to the ministry room last week for uh, an ear infection, a swimmer's ear in my right ear, I had it for over a week and it caused a lot of pain, especially in the morning. So when she'd wake up, she'd have an eight to 10 pain from her ear down to her neck and shoulder. Then she re received prayer on Sunday. Monday, she woke up with a two. And then she told God, she knew, listen to this, she knew he had complete the healing for her, and she wasn't emailing her testimony until she received the full healing. So I love the contending there. I love that declaration. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, she had a one, and then finally Thursday, she was pain-free, and she said, so thankful for the prayer and standing on God's promises, we are healed, not the sick seeking healing, come on, but by His stripes, we are healed. Yes, yeah, so we've got to receive that truth and we've got to walk out what we believe. And so we've been praying for you and we have words of knowledge. And I just saw they had the testimony um, QR code there, but I also put testimony cards now right by the communion for you all. And so the words of knowledge that the ministry team came up with um, this week was feeling overwhelmed and a heaviness in the chest, dizziness and lightheaded, tinnitus and I know like I hear people say the doctors say there is no cure for that they are so wrong Jesus is the cure so we just command the ringing in the ears to go in Jesus name migraines and nerve damage so if you are struggling or contending for anything come back to the ministry room right over here to my left and we would love to pray for you amen we have somebody getting baptized this morning and I just um I wanted to encourage anybody, if you want to get baptized today or this or next week, uh, maybe you weren't able to sign up, but we had three baptisms in the first service. And um, bat baptism is, is more of a funeral than your actual funeral will ever be. I mean, this is, this is a time where you say goodbye and something actually dies when you go into that water. Your old self dies. The self that you weren't um, created for. And the opposite of love in the Bible is, is actually selfishness. And uh, that's why I love baptism so much. And the way that Paul talked about it is that we repent, believe, and get baptized. And it's at the point of baptism where we say goodbye to the old self. And so I, I'm so excited about that because 
if you have something that doesn't have life in it, if you have a dead branch, that branch can't bear fruit. But what Christ does is we exchange one thing for another, and that thing that we exchange it for is a seed that has life in it. And now you can actually bear fruit. And fruit is the evidence that a plant is saying, it's not all about me. It's about the next generation that's coming along. And it actually bears fruit onto that and lays down its life so that the next generation can live. And so I'm excited about baptisms. And so that's going to be happening. If, if you are in here and, and you've never been baptized and you know that you should be, how many of you guys know that's the first thing that God commands you to do after repent and believe is be baptized. And if he's Lord, then he's Lord. Amen? Amen. So Father, we thank you this morning. We, we thank you for, for this funeral that's about to take place in which the old will die and the, and the new will come forth. And we bless it, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, if there's anybody in this room that needs to be baptized, let it be. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can stand back to your feet.
so faithful that's our father so kind that's our father We can stand on his faithfulness. We can stand on his kindness, his goodness, his love and peace. Regardless of if we experience those things does not dictate who he is, amen? He is faithful, he is kind, he is love, he is gentle and he loves every single one of us. If you find yourself this morning where you feel like you're actually cut off from the love of God, I just wanna speak that over you. He loves you. He loves you. If you, if you feel like you're in a place where you, you've been condemned, not convicted, but condemned and you feel shame, I, I just wanna break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. He calls you by your name. He knows who you really are and he calls you out of that. I was just praying that this morning. I was like, Lord, I thank you so much that you don't see me for sometimes the things that I, I manifest. There's times where we don't really manifest Jesus' nature, right? <laughs> but he doesn't call us by that. He calls us by our name because he knows who we really are. And I'm, I'm living proof this morning to, to know what it means and feels like to receive the love of Jesus and it's like no other. I promise you there's been times in my life where I have went and I've tried to find things outside of who he is, but his love, his peace, his joy is the thing that's true and steady. and we can stand on his faithfulness. We can stand on his love. Amen. Let's sing this. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. Faithful, faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. Let's sing this thing. I say yes to your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. And I'll say yes to your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. And I choose to pray.
Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you we can stand on your nature and your character for who you are. And God, I just pray you would give us eyes to see that. Not a broken man's perspective of who you are, not our life experiences of who you are, but see your true nature and your beauty. That we would encounter you and all that you have to offer on this side of heaven. I pray that roots would run deep in relationship with you. We wanna see your beauty, Jesus. So Lost in a 
majesty Come and behold him Isn't he captivating? We'll keep on singing So come and behold him Isn't he fascinating? Come and behold him Beautiful, beautiful. 
sing to glorify you to sing of your nature to sing of testimony to sing of the gospel of Jesus to sing to our Savior Jesus Christ we love you we thank you our Lord our Messiah our Savior I pray that everyone who's looking will find so much more of you than they've ever anticipated. And I pray that we would have a heart to seek you out. And if we hit a wall or we come up to something and it doesn't, it's not you, it's not who we know of you to be or even who we hear about you to be, God, I just pray there would be persistence We want to encounter your true nature, your love, every step of the way. And we just thank you for your truth. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that we, we just have this opportunity to find peace in a broken world that's full of chaos. And that you give us not only that, but you give us the authority to claim peace in the midst of storms. And as Jen was saying earlier in that testimony, that we're not sick seeking to be healed, but we are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you that you made a finished work on the cross. And God, I just pray we would know and stand on that to be able to manifest it in our life if we're not experiencing it. I just pray for more understanding of, of the authority you've given us to be here on this earth to be like your son, to be like Jesus. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Praise family. My name is Javiba and I am the media coordinator here at Praise. And I'll be praying for our offering today. Um, so there's several ways that you can give. You can give online on the Church Center app. We have two baskets up front and the black box in the back. I just have one verse I want to share with you today. And it's 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And it says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for God loves a cheerful giver. And so it's not about the amount that you give. And while, yes, we are to tithe 10%, but it's about your heart posture when you're giving. Are you giving just out of routine because we're Christians and we're supposed to tithe? Or are you giving out of joy and gratitude and thanksgiving and just thanking God for all that he's done and trusting and having faith and knowing that he is your father and your provider? So what is your heart posture today? Are you a cheerful giver? Let's pray. God, you are so good and worthy to be praised. Thank you for being our Father and our provider. Today, we give with cheerful hearts, with hearts of gratitude and thanksgiving. And so, Father, we pray that you will take this offering and you will bless it and use it and multiply it for your kingdom and for your glory. And Father, I know that you will bless and take care of those who are cheerful givers today. We praise you and we thank you and we worship you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Will Hart is a longtime friend and partner of Praise, and he'll be joining us August 11th to speak at both of our morning services. 
Will is the CEO of Iris Global, a ministry founded by Roland and Heidi Baker. His call is to take the simplicity of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit wherever he goes. So please join us at that Sunday morning service to hear from Will. Behind every dynamic worship service is a team of dedicated people who work behind the scenes. From sound engineers to lighting designers, camera operators, and media coordinators, our tech team plays a crucial role. Whether you're skilled in audio mixing, video production, or you're simply eager to learn, there's a place for you. Join us in worship by using your creativity and technical skills to help us lift up our God in worship. To get involved, come see me after the service or check out the groups page on the Church Center app. Women of Worth gather to spur each other on in love and good deeds through worship, prayer, and teaching. We are so excited to announce that we are hosting our very own women's retreat for our Praise Women and Friends. Wild's virtuously free women's retreat will be from Friday, February 21st through Sunday, February 23rd, 2025. Wild's women's retreat will conclude our Proverbs 31 theme for the year and celebrate what God is doing in and through his daughters. We have three Praise Women who will be teaching on specific characteristics of a virtuous woman. Sarah Torres, Amy Gottwald, and Toyin John. This is a great opportunity to fellowship, worship, and spur each other on as we dive into His Word together. A $30 deposit is due August 15, 2024. Please check out our registration for further details and final costs. You can contact myself, Raquel Covington, or Emily Eisenberger with any questions you may have. Thank you. Good morning. I'm glad to be uh, talking to you guys today about the high call, high cost of discipleship part two. I, I went away uh, with my family. We were celebrating Willow's 10th birthday. We went to Great Wolf Lodge down in Maryland. Has anybody been there yet? Yeah? And uh, it's a money pit, but <laughs> we were down there and my, my wife is, is going away for a few days. She's, she's going to go on a hiking trip and I'm just sitting there with my, my son and my, my other son. I have a a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old, and I looked at them, I said, hey, guys, is there anything that you want to, you know, ask your, ask your mom, like maybe like a deep question before she leaves and, you know, have some conversation, because I'm in charge of these kids socially and trying to get them in tune with the people that are around them, and Kanan looks right, like, he didn't miss a beat, he goes, if our house was on fire and you could only save two people, who would they be? <laughs> like, just like that, and I was like, Phew. and I was like, Am I, did I make the cut? And, and Erica, she's, she's wise. She goes, well, I, I'm not going to answer that question because I'm, I'm a mom. I, I'm not going to just save two people. And he, like, and he didn't even, he didn't, there wasn't a pause. He goes, would you like to know who I would save? <laughs> just like that. And I was like, is this what he's doing at night? <laughs> just running scenarios. And, uh, well, Willow and I were dead. We didn't make it. So <laughs> mom and Brecken get out. And so that's why, that's why I'm going to make sure the fire alarms work, so I don't have to rely on him to save me. It's just intense. It's an intense moment. So I, I want to speak to you guys today. Me personally, I've just, been, I've just been reading the book of Exodus again, and I'm just kind of going through that book. And that book is packed full of miracles. Like, to, 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 to be a part of that group and to walk to watch what they witnessed with their own eyes and to see how they walked after witnessing, God annihilated Egypt with those 10 plagues, like the 10 plagues of Egypt. He annihilated Egypt. And they're leaving that. The reputation of God is getting out into the land of Canaan. They heard about what happened in Egypt. These, these people then witnessed the miracle of the sea parting. They walked through the sea parting. They're seeing Moses go up on the mountain. They're, they're hearing thunder crack and God is... is is meeting with Moses on the mountain. They're witnessing it. And then when they're, they're down there and the people need something to eat, God is supernaturally providing manna on the ground. They're collecting their manna in the morning. And then there's a cloud by day and a fire by night in which God's presence is actually with them. 
that's like intense. It's very, and I was thinking about that in my mind. And so then they send these spies to go spy out the land. The spies come back and 10 of them have a bad report. Two of them have a good report. Joshua and Caleb are like, we can take these guys. Everybody else is like, we're, we're grasshoppers in the sight of these giants. And I was, in my mind, I was like, were they picking the manna up off the ground, see the spies coming, and, and the spies come to them, and behind the spies, the pillar of, the presence of God is behind these spies as they're giving the report of what they can't and cannot do. Isn't that wild? And, and like when you read these stories, like one of the temptations in reading the scripture is just to be like, man, what bozos. Look at these bozos not believe in the right report. Do you know what happens then? The only, the only, only two people go in. It's, it's Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else dies in the desert. Isn't that crazy? I, I, Joshua's 85 and he's like, I, you know, I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm ready to go in, take the land. And it's like, that's who I am. I'm Joshua. And it's, you know, I, I, think, I think sometimes like we, we hear these sermons about how to be Joshua, how to be David, and, and, and we're going to do the things that they did. And it's like, well, maybe we should like start by reading our Bibles. Does that seem like a good idea? And I, what I, there are, this is, my, this is my fear is that you walk in relationship with the Lord, you figure out how the Lord is treating you in one season, and then you make a mold of that season, and then you make that be your Christian walk. And it's like, that's not what fathers do. Fathers discipline you differently as you go through seasons. So as a dad, I have Canaan. I do treat Canaan differently than I do Brecken, because Brecken's in a different season. And apparently I got to do some work with Canaan better than I have been doing. <laughs> but do, do, you guys, do you guys understand that? Like God is, is, is raising you differently than he did in a past season because he has different expectations for you because you're in a new season. Yeah. And so what was okay back then might not be okay now and it might be good to check in with him. Amen. And what he expected from you then for you to do might be different now mm. than then. But like what people end up like, like doing like with their relationship with God is they're like, okay, this is who God is, molded it, got it, done, check, moving on. And that's not, that's not how a father raises their child. And, and the father is raising you into the full maturity of Christ. And I, what I end up seeing oftentimes, I think in our Christian teaching, is we see a lot of inspiration without being given tools for transformation. Because we're supposed to be transformed into who he is. And so this morning, I wanted to just give you a tool that I think is really helpful, okay? The tool that I'm going to share with you this morning is how to read scripture in such a way that you would take the lowest seat. So Jesus commands us to take the low seat. And when we read scripture, sometimes we don't take the low seat, we take the high seat. And when you take the high seat, what you end up doing is you end up missing out on transformation, this is all going to make sense to you as I, as I continue through it. He tells a parable one time. This is the parable. It's Luke 18, 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began praying this in regard to himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, swindlers, crooked, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all that I get. And so this, this man is standing there. He's looking around with his eyes, seeing that he appears to himself to be doing better than other people. It's so important that we see correctly. If you believe that you know truth, then you can't be led and guided into truth. If you believe that you know what the truth is, you will not go on journey with Holy Spirit. You'll actually miss that bus. So here's this person, he sees himself this high and says, oh, thank God I'm not like these other people. So where God wants to take him, he can't even begin that journey because he hasn't taken the low seat. Here's the tax collector. I tell you, this, um, but the tax collector standing some distance away was even unwilling to raise his eyes toward heaven, but was beating his chest saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other one. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who exalts himself, but, 
the one who humbles himself will be exalted. If you take the low seat, if you take the lowest seat, then God can take you somewhere. He can invite you up to the high seat. If you take the high seat, the only place to go is down. And so we have a tendency sometimes when we read these stories is to put ourselves in the place of these awesome heroes that are in the story instead of the bozos. But if you never put yourself in the place of the bozo, then you never get to transform from the bozo to the hero. And I've seen, I've seen God do stuff, miraculous stuff in my life. I've seen, I've seen miracles. I've seen, like maybe I haven't seen like the Red Sea part, but I've seen God do some pretty amazing stuff. And sometimes I still struggle with believing that he's gonna do it again. There's things where like God absolutely showed up and he was amazing. And then sometimes there's still a place where like, man, he showed up for this. Why am I not believing for when he shows up for this? This isn't even as big as this. Like I can be a bozo, right? But for me, read scripture and not put myself in the place of some of these people that aren't the hero and realize I have some growing to do, I condemn myself to not grow. And um, like, you know, you you have Thomas the doubter then who was later on, um, he was martyred for his faith. And there was a point where he doubted, but then there was a point where he believed, and then there was a point where he moved on from that. And yeah, like, like Peter denied Jesus, but then he moved on from that. And like Peter, Peter had some like bad moments. Have you guys had some bad moments? There's, there's a parable in scripture. It's, it's actually like quite long. And if you don't put yourself in the lowest seat, then you won't get anything out of it. And I want to read it to you now. It's the parable of the sheep and the goats. And I want to tell you the reason why I can put myself in the lowest seat. The reason why I can put myself in the lowest seat is because I know that God loves me and I know that God forgave me, right? And so, so, so there's a place where I have confidence in who he is and what he's done in me. So then I don't have to take scripture and make it fit my theology so that I can be more comfortable. A lot of times people are just reading this because they're just, they just want to hear, just tell me I'm saved so that I can move on with my own life. And it's like, this, this book is, is crying out something huge. The calling that you're actually called to, the fullness of the maturity of Christ, like Dan said the other week, so that you could have confidence on the day of judgment. That's what you're called to. That's a high call. But this is what we do in Christianity. We decide that we're in a high place and the calling, we underestimate the calling, we overestimate our ability. We should underestimate our ability and overestimate the call so that we could see our need for him and like the tax collector, cry out for help. Say, I need your help. But to read a parable and not get anything out of it, to read the sheep and the goats and say, well, I'm a sheep and he's my shepherd, done. And not actually be convicted by a parable from your master. So I, I just want to read it to you. It says, now he began telling a parable to the invited guests. Oh, well, I'm sorry, let me read this to you, this one, because this is where it talks about taking the lowest seat. Now began telling a parable to the invited guests when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, whenever you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And the one who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then in disgrace, you will proceed to occupy the last place. This parable isn't a parable. This is gonna happen one day. If you spend your life taking the lowest seat, humbling yourself, underestimating your abilities, overestimating the call that you're called to, crying out for help and say, Jesus, I need to go on a journey with Holy Spirit that's going to form me and mold me into the person that you've actually called me to be. I need to believe what it is that you did in me at baptism. I need your help. I can't do this alone. And that's, that's like my, this is, this, is why, this is one of the reasons why I'm convinced people don't actually seek the Lord is because they don't actually think they need him. And you don't actually understand what you've been called to. You're clinging to the word saved 
as, as it is, is that I'm going to heaven one day. Instead of clinging, clinging to the word saved, I've been made whole and delivered and I'm not of this world anymore and I've been called to something higher and I'm gonna manifest the kingdom in my life while I'm here, but I can't do it alone. I need his help. So Leonard Ravenhill, I can't quote him exactly. He said this one time when I heard him say it. He said this, um, to wake up and not pray is to wake up and tell God, I don't need you today. That's very convicting to me. I don't need you to pull off the plans that I have. Well, you're not supposed to be pulling off the plans you have. You're supposed to be pulling off the plans he has. And have we so lowered the call of Christ to the point where you don't actually need him? And listen to me, God loves you. God forgive you. I love my kids, but I discipline them. I discipline my kids because they need to be disciplined because I'm concerned about their future and and that one day that they would grow up. When you don't discipline your kids, they don't grow up. And so that's what he's calling us to. He's calling us to to grow up into the fullness of him. And so for us to pull that off, guess guess what we need? We need to be disciplined by our father. And we need him to help us and to tell us. But if you're saying to him, I don't need you today, guess what his presence doesn't do? It doesn't draw near to you because you didn't draw near to him. Do you guys think you need the presence of God? Then you probably need to what? Yeah, And, and, and draw near to him so that he would draw near to you. I was just having this conversation with New Life for Girls the other day. It's so funny, there's a pillar there that I called Jesus and I said like, you gotta draw near to Jesus and I always hug this pillar and I'll pretend it's this. Like spiritual maturity I'm convinced, isn't somebody who's been a Christian for a long time. It's somebody who's in close proximity to Jesus. Spiritual maturity is a proximity issue, not a knowledge and time issue. If I'm close to Jesus, I, and I, one, of the, one of these sweet girls said, I, I know somebody who I really respected a lot um, and they loved Jesus and they were in a place where they were teaching others and this, this person like fell and they, they were their pastor from, from where they came from. They just found out that the pastor fell. And it's like, how did that happen? It's a proximity issue. Like they weren't drawing near to Jesus. You can't, you can't draw near to Jesus and not be like Jesus. So maturity is a proximity issue. For anybody in here who's like, man, this Christian walk is so hard. It's not hard. You just draw near to him. You spend time with him. He'll reveal to you what this book says. But to, to go home and say, well, I'm just going to read the Bible. It's like, you're not going to read this apart from him. So, so one of the things that I do when I read scriptures, I read one chapter and then I say, God, I need your help in understanding what this chapter says. I'm going to read it again. Would you reveal yourself to me and what it is that you have for me in this chapter? Right? It's a good tool. And then I read it, but I take the lowest seat as I read it. So one day we're going to be invited to a feast and there's going to be seats. But whenever you are invited, go and take the last place so that when the one who has invited you comes, he will say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will have honor in the sight of all who are dining at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Do you believe that's true? Then you will humble yourselves. And you will humble yourself when you read this book. And you take the lowest seat when you read the book so that you might see the call that you're called to and not assume that you're already doing it and you will cry out for help from Holy Spirit. Is that a good plan? So this is probably one of the most heavy-hitting parables. I've never, I've never read a parable. Jesus, my master, is he your master? He never spoke the way that modern Christianity is taught. He never spoke like that. Like, hey, guy, he never went into town and said, hey, guys, I'm Lord. Confess that with your mouth, and then I'm out of here. And don't worry about anything, because it's not a big deal. He told some of the most heavy-hitting parables I've ever heard. I've ever, like, when I I read these things, all it does is say, mirror and reflect what it is that we're actually called to. When he came into town, he told people to leave everything and follow him. 
It says this, Matthew 25, 31. But when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Now, like when you're reading this, the, the first thing that happens, at least for me, this is what always happened. I always said, well, that's me. He's my shepherd. I'm his sheep. Check. I don't even need to continue to read the parable. Check. Well, let me just see what happens with the sheep. And he'll put the, sh- he'll put the sheep on his right. That's me. But the goat's on his left. That's everybody else. Not you guys. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of the least of these brothers or sisters, you did it for me. The point of this parable is not to tell you who's gonna go to heaven and who's gonna go to hell. It's for Christians to begin to ask the question, am I actually loving people? Are there people outside of my love circle, my friends and family, who are actually in need, who I actually have a heart for because I've become love, just like he is love, and am I actually extending myself and putting forth effort into loving other people? That's the point of the parable. But if you take the high seat, that will never be a conviction in your life. You will assume that you're a sheep and never put yourself in the position of a goat. Let me read to you what he says to the goats. Then he will also say to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed people, into the eternal fire. Right there. That's pretty heavy hitting. Do you guys know that hell is on fire? There's weeping and gnashing of teeth there. I believe that he set it on fire so that we wouldn't want to go there. Utter darkness. Curse people into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they, they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or as a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then I will answer them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me either. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, do you think, now, who's the audience in Matthew 25? He's got 12 people there, his disciples. This, he did not go into town and share this parable. He shared this parable with his 12 disciples. And this is the reason why he's sharing it with them. Not so they could be like, I'm a sheep, no problem. It's to say this, hey, are you acting like a sheep? Because this is what a sheep does. And if you're not acting like a sheep, maybe you humble yourself and ask him for help. Lord, there's people in need around me and I can't always see them. I need eyes to see. Please help me. I'm actually called to go beyond my friends and family and actually extend myself for this community and those that are in need in it. But I can't always see that opportunity. Would you please help me? I'm called to live like a sheep, not just say that I'm one. But if you never put yourself in the low seat, you could rip right through this parable and say, tough luck to those other people. Too bad they're not a sheep like me. Did you see what my solution was? Was my solution to go out there and try harder? What did I say to do? You asked asked Jesus for help. We, we have one solution in this kingdom and it's, it's to go to your father. And everybody in this room, I don't care how you've lived because of the shed blood of Jesus in this life, you can have boldness to go to, go to your dad and ask for help. Isn't that good news? Amen. Do you guys think you could be living like sheep a little bit better? Yep. No, I don't know. I don't want to live like a goat and claim I'm a sheep. But I don't want to go out there either and try hard to be a sheep. I want to go to my father, ask for eyes to see and ears to hear, fellowship with him in the morning, have him draw near to me as I draw near to him and have me and him go to those who are in need 
because what on earth am I going to do? On my, what do I have to give them by myself? But him and I together could go and anything could happen. If you continue to take the low seat, let's just say I, I'm in an argument. Let's say Brian and I are in an argument. That's my, that's my friend over there. Some might even say best. <laughs> we'll see how he does. There's, if him and I are in an argument, the lowest seat is for me to listen to what he's saying, not try to get my point across. That's a way to, get, that's a way to take the lowest seat. If, if he's in an argument with Nicole, he could take the lowest seat by listening to what she has to say right? And then actually asking the question, I might actually be wrong. What if we did that? Said, I might actually be confused. That'd be amazing. You know what else would be cool? Is if as a leader, I actually began to say this, I might not know what I'm doing. I better make sure I better ask for help. What people end up doing is they end up overestimating their ability, underestimating the call, and trying to do it on their own, and they don't even end up doing it, and they don't even realize it. And that's not what we're called to as Christians. We are called to be the most exalted people because we've humbled ourselves the most. Because we've humbled ourselves the most, we're called to be exalted. Because that's what he does to the humble is he exalts them. And the meek will inherit the earth. And that's what we're called to. But you can't start a journey when you don't admit that you're lost. You can't receive grace when you don't admit you need help. If you claim to see, then your sin remains, as he told the Pharisees. They said, are we blind too? He says, no, but since you claim to see, your sin remains. And man, you guys, I've... I've, I've, I've studied this book a long time. I've taken the classes, done all the work and stuff. The more I read this, the more convinced I am that I need his help. Not, I got this. Pfft. Old and New Testament, I got this. No, there, there's, a, there's a higher call that he's actually calling us to. And then you might say this, like, well, you're making me feel as if I'm not good enough. On your own, you're not. On your own, you're naked, blind, and poor. That's, my, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of the keys. It's the whole point of this life is he actually wants to be with you. He wants to do life with you. This isn't a try harder gospel. This is a draw near to him, be in proximity to him and watch what happens to your spiritual maturity. Isn't that easy? Doesn't that seem like a light, light and easy yoke? So are you saying I got to figure everything out? No, what I'm saying is draw near to him. So one thing you got to figure out and it's the one thing the enemy doesn't want you to do is to actually draw near to him. Because if you, if you draw near to him, he'll start showing you ways to be humble. He starts showing you ways to be humble. His grace and favor will come upon you. Then you'll be able to steward things better. And when you steward things better, he'll be able to trust you more. And in the midst of your stewardship, when you're more obedient, he'll put power on you. And then you'll find yourself in the fullness of the maturity of Christ, all because you were meeting with him and making him a priority. Isn't that an easy plan? You guys can start yelling amen. amen. There you go. And I, I got to tell you, I've, I'm, I can't, I can't believe the way that God shows up. I've, I've been on a, a personal journey of trying to humble myself like I've never done before. And, and Lord, you know, I need a conviction of who I am apart from you. Do you guys have that conviction? Do you know I put it this way? I know how I get when I'm not with him. And nobody can bear that guy. And after you start meeting with the Lord, like people get used to you and the Lord. And if you were to show up without him, they would know right away. And so there, there's a place where, where you solidify that one thing. And it, it, it is first base in Christianity. It's just being with him and meeting with him. 
So we're, we're, this is the last week of the keys. If you didn't hang up your key, please hang that up because we're going to take that and look at that and try to figure out better ways to partner with you guys on that to encourage you. But man, it, it's, it's a really, really simple and plain gospel. It's a really easy solution. It's just to be with him. Amen? If you take the high seat, you won't see your need for him. You'll underestimate the call. And then one day when you're at that feast, you'll take your seat and best case scenario, he'll say, that's not for you. You need to move down. But if you spent your whole life taking the low seat, it'll be amazing what kind of seat you'll be sitting in when you're in front of him. I feel like sometimes we, we, we take the lens of just assure me of my salvation over every parable, and that's not the point of every parable. He was trying to equip you to become the fullness of who he is. Amen? All right, so I have just a few announcements. Let me pray for you first. Would you guys stand? So Father, we, we, we need eyes to see, we need ears to hear, we need to draw near you. Lord, there, there's, there's, there's ways that we could humble ourselves that we can't even come up with, but you know exactly how to do it. And there are solutions out there, like in relationships, where you know exactly how we need to humble ourselves. There's, there's missions that you want to send people on. And I mean like, like, like in York, that, that first we need to humble ourselves before you can even trust us with it. And there's, there's the most basic principle that like, we need to be able to see that we need you so that we'd humble ourselves and be with you. So Father, I, I, I pray that the high call would come upon us and that we would not underestimate what it is that we've been called to. And we would not overestimate our ability, but we would see our need for you. And we just praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before you go anywhere, there's three things I need to tell you. Number one, Oasis is out there. Diane's out there. They're doing an event that's coming up. Uh, go out there, talk to her. You can sign up for it out there. Also, um, the Life Ministry, I forgot its name. Deeper Still, thank you. Deeper Still Table's out there. If you've ever been, um, uh, if, if abor- abortion and that topic has touched your life, um, they are an awesome ministry. Tons of, tons of testimony pours out of there. Um, they're with us this morning. They're doing a retreat in October. If that's something you're interested in or you know somebody, they would love to talk to you there um, because if, that, if they need healing, that, that ministry is just awesome at it. And the last thing is that we're collecting children's ministry volunteers. I'll be over here. We had about four people sign up in the first service. We're looking for more. So if, if you're looking to be connected to this church and you're not helping out anywhere yet, children's ministry meets once every four weeks. It's also like you're not like a lead teacher right away. You're a helper. And if you want to remain a helper, you can. But uh, it's just an awesome way to be a part of the body. So if that's you, we'd love to get you signed up. I'll be right over here with the QR code. Bless you guys. Have a great Sunday. Thank you for joining us. At Praise, our mission is to create an environment for the Holy Spirit to inspire, challenge, and transform people for generations to come. And we hope today's message can do just that. If you have questions or would like to learn more about Praise, you can visit praiseyork.com. To stay up to date with sermons, events, and more, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next week here at Praise Community Church.